So lap band is probably the purest model of what we'd call restriction. It's a band with a balloon on the inside that wraps around the top of the stomach. You wrap it in a position so that you have a, about a golf ball sized little pouch. So you swallow a bite of food, it goes down your esophagus, tube from the mouth into the stomach. The band squeezes on the outside wall so then it stops that bite of food you put in and the stomach slowly squeezes it through. What this does is this allows um, that pouch to stretch, which sends nerve signals back to the brain, telling you you're full. And slowing down how fast you can eat allows your body to sample, because that food can then go into the lower intestinal tract, sample what you've put in, in your mouth so that it can say, okay, I'm getting calories. I should stop. Generally, people that are good candidates for bands are people that are pretty savvy about nutrition, pretty willing to eat a healthy diet, solid food, will make a half an hour amount of time to eat that meal, takes that long, can come back and get adjustments because the way a band works is there's a balloon and I have a port underneath the skin and I can add or subtract fluid to fine tune how much it's squeezing on your stomach to uh, create a rate for that solid food to go through. Usually you get about four to six adjustments in the first year and then you're coming back maybe one or two times a year. Uh, and you're coming back at least once a year to get an assessment. So, so there's, it's pretty intensive. And for band patients to do the best, they're coming back every month, even if I don't adjust. If you're too tight and it's not completely obvious, you'll probably gain weight because you can't eat solid foods. Every time you try to eat solid foods, you get stuck, you throw up, you're uncomfortable. So then you subconsciously migrate to things that are more lubricated. So there's a higher fat, break down easier, gain weight, even though you're suffering. So the best candidate is someone who is generally younger, more mobile so they can exercise, has a weight loss of about 10 or 11 BMI points, so meaning less than 40, have access to taking time off work, coming in to see me often, and, um, and is willing to work with it because they're going to be a little bit tighter and they're probably going to be a little bit hungrier than the other operations. Bypass is the gold standard in the United States. It's been around for 40 plus years. It's done laparoscopically, so uh, people recover much faster. It's very good at weight loss. People lose about 70% on average of excess weight by the first year and a half. Uh, what that means is if you have 100 pounds to lose, you lose 70. So what we're going to do is we're going to bypass the stomach, so we cut a little egg-shaped uh, piece out of the very top, and then we're going to reroute by cutting some small intestine that's below, that's called jejunum. We're going to bring that up and sew it to that little egg, and then so the stomach has a place to drain, we're going to sew that cut edge, the leading cut edge, back into the intestine. So essentially we've created a detour over the stomach and the first part of the small intestine because food's no longer going there. And so it goes from your mouth into that little pouch. It goes down that limb of intestine we've sewn to it called the roux limb. And then it finally mixes with the enzymes and chemicals that are going to digest it further downstream. So, so it's a small stomach. That's one component. We're bypassing part of the intestine, which is contributing also to part of its, how it functions. And we're delivering food to the distal part of the gut sooner than it's used to seeing it. So that signals satiety, because usually the stomach's gonna slowly release this food. And if the body sees that food earlier than it normally would, it stops you from eating, because it's, it would usually be later in the day that it would see it. Pain is, is there, but it's well managed, usually by oral narcotics for a couple of days. We put you on liquids for a couple of weeks. So it's more small swallows and sips. You're up and moving the same day. People taking pain medicine usually at night to sleep, but usually can be driving by the end of a week. Uh, you're a little more tired than usual, but a lot of people can get back to work two to three weeks. If you're lifting heavy things at work, you're going to be on restricted duty for about a month, month and a half. But uh, you can definitely work from home and get through half days pretty easily after a week or two. The pattern of eating with a bypass is Chew your food, slow down. It's a little less tight than a band, but you still have to take that 15 minutes to a half an hour to eat. 
One thing that's a little bit different than a ban, though, is that if you do high-fat, high-sugar foods, so let's say you try to eat a bowl of ice cream, there's something called dumping, which is a reaction. And all of a sudden, you're sweating, you're feeling a little disoriented, your heart's racing, followed by cramps, diarrhea, and then fatigue. So it's not pleasant. Now, it sounds horrible, but if your poison is ice cream, it stops you from eating ice cream. And the taste change also, because there's really hormone changes besides the little stomach and the little openings that are also go along with the bypass. So you're less hungry, satisfied sooner, can eat those sweets and don't have the same attractiveness to sweets. So they, don't, they don't seem as appetizing to you, so you eat less. And so you lose weight pretty rapidly, and most people are done by a year, year and a half losing weight. And so, you know, if you have 200 pounds to lose, you lose about 140 in the course of a year. So that's it's pretty rapid, and it's, it's pretty impressive, and it's almost too easy sometimes for the patients. That's one of the reasons we talked earlier about preparation. Uh, we want them to develop all the good habits uh, and think about developing the good habits and realizing they're doing them, not try to recover them three years from now. Sleeve so went from being very few procedures 10 years ago to uh, finally surpassing all the other procedures this year. One of the things about the sleeve is that you have to get through the first 30 days you know, it's very hard to hurt yourself with it. You still have to take vitamins, but you know, you're not gonna get uh, ulcerations around the connections. You're not gonna get obstruction or twisting of the intestine that you can get with the bypass. So if you don't take your vitamins, it's gonna take longer for you to develop deficiencies. So, so it's a pretty safe slash effective procedure. We're reducing the size of the stomach. We're gonna take that big stomach and we're going to put a calibrating tube down the inside edge and we're gonna cut away all the excess. Calibration tube's about an inch across. So think of your stomach being about 12 inches long, about an inch across, and so we take about 80, 85% of the stomach out. So, so it limits volume, how fast you can eat, but you know the real reason these operations work is that it changes the signaling the hormones, and a hormone that's often uh, uh, mentioned with the sleeve is something called ghrelin, and that's a hunger hormone. But there's actually many hormones that are changed. One of the things about uh, a sleeve is it's higher pressure. So if you have trouble with reflux and digestion, uh, we tend to make that worse unless we can find something to correct hiatal hernia at the same time we do the sleeve. Um, both of them treat diabetes better than medications, but bypass is definitely better at treating diabetes and keeping diabetes in remission than a sleeve is. And it appears that a bypass even gets stronger as you talk about five years compared to a sleeve. If someone comes in and they're overweight, they have bad reflux, they're diabetic, I'm going to be pushing them to a bypass because I know that if I don't, then when they pick a sleeve and I give it to them, then I'm gonna, probably gonna be doing a bypass because all of a sudden their reflux gets so bad they can't lie down flat without sort of suffocating. So people think there's a lot more going on with a bypass, so they say that looks way too severe. When you look at a band, you just wrap it around the top of the stomach, very simple, you know, it's surgery, but you're not cutting anything, so if you believe that that is gonna lose the weight you need to lose and it's gonna correct your life the way you want it to correct it, that sounds like a perfect option because it's reversible, it's simple, you're not cutting, wrists are lower. In reality though, you wanna pick something that's gonna be effective. So if sleeve and bypass are more effective, they look at those two and just cutting stomach versus cutting stomach and intestine. And so people just naturally say, I'll give me the one in the middle, looks less invasive, I'll take that one. So you have to, you have to restructure your life. So some people, never believed in exercise to begin with, but we do everything we can to try to convince them how important it is for the long-term maintenance of their health to exercise more. And we're talking five to seven days. So, so that's the potential drawback of getting into this program. Overall, long-term, life expectancy is better, quality of life is better, but you have to take your vitamins. You know, if you choose not to take your calcium, for example, you're probably gonna get weak bones 30 years later. Uh, 
if you don't take your vitamin B12, you can get anemia in your iron. So you have to come back to the doctor more. So it requires you to be a little more proactive on maintenance than most people are. I wish everyone would go out and advertise it because I know it's such a great therapy and it could do so much good, but I think people have the right to privacy. You know, they, there's no compelling reason for you to have to, uh, you know, put a placard on your head that I'm a weight loss patient. And most people don't. Now, that's just because there's a more of a stigma on doing surgery for weight loss than there is of having your heart operated on. And it's unfortunate, but it's still the case today. You're talking millions and millions of people that qualify. So, so really you have to approach it as a public health problem, meaning more education when they're young, because we know that uh, if you're an obese adolescent, for example, 70, 70 plus percent chance that you're going to be an obese adult. And so we're getting more diabetics at 13 than we've ever had in the past. The Obama administration, when they talked about sort of basic coverage, fortunately did put obesity in. So, so there's at least 28 states right now that, and including Medicare, that provide bariatric surgery coverage. Usually they may limit how many procedures you have, meaning if you had a band, you might get a once in a lifetime shot, so you, you better pick the right one first because you're not gonna get a second one. And they've also uh, put criteria in for uh, being eligible, meaning you have to go on another diet for six months, so you have to go on another diet for three months. Medicare's four months before you can qualify besides seeing the dietitian, the psychologist, and getting all the other testing. They'll even pay for medically supervised therapy. So it's, so not everyone needs surgery. You know, sometimes talking to your doctor, getting meal plans, education, maybe appetite suppressants are what you need for that 20, 30 pounds. So they've built in payments for those and that was never really covered before. So, so I mean, there's some positive moves, but it's clearly not there yet. Today, we have a very effective safe procedure that uh, can lengthen your life and improve the quality of your life. We've standardized these procedures and developed criteria to ensure the safety from the beginning to the end. Uh, so the, these are some of the safest procedures out there and bariatric surgery is actually serving as a model to providing sort of this multidisciplinary care for things like orthopedics, cardiovascular care. So it's, it's one of the safest types of procedures. It also is a high value procedure, meaning uh, by treating your weight, we're treating diabetes, we're treating your heart disease, we're treating your joint disease. This procedure, though it's traditionally been weight loss, really treats your whole body, and it really allows you to have a longer life and a better quality of life, and so it definitely should be accessed more.